And I'm also going to try demonstrating this thing. This is a homemade collet made from PVC. It has eight slits in it. I have these two hose clamps on it. The reason why I have two is to try to keep the weight as balanced as possible. So they're put on opposite of each other. Each of these hose clamps has half of a washer soldered directly into the flathead screw. That way I can tighten this manually without needing a screwdriver. I found if you use some um, resin for fiberglassing, you can make these pretty easily inside of some scrap pieces of one inch PVC. So here I've got this test piece. It had a weird defect in the bottom that was all chipped out and stuff. And we're gonna see if we can try to machine a flat face on it. Um, this one inch PVC pipe, it's heated up ever so slightly so that this can be deformed a bit. And a three quarter inch to half inch threaded, uh, this is a slip to threaded bushing, is jammed inside of the one inch pipe. And that's just because um, the tolerances work out that way. Instead of gluing it, I put three screws, these are just little machine screws, um, into the side. And the way I did those symmetrically is I actually lined them up with this hex that's at the top. Then into this threaded part of the bushing, I have a brass fitting. This is a brass threaded reducer bushing. I don't know what the technical name is. This is half inch um, MIP on this side and one eighth inch FIP on this side. Um, M is for male, F is for female. And then I had this extra kind of one eighth inch MIP nipple. And by having all of these reducers, you have something that is centered pretty well. And it's very stable. This piece simply slides into the drill chuck and you can tighten that down. And as you can see, this one spins pretty balanced. This is not really wobbling that much, if at all. Because of these little washers sticking out, you want to be careful that those don't catch you. And we're going to try doing a demonstration cutting using a drill press vise with a chisel mounted in it. The way that I like to do this is I put the platform way off to the side so that this can slide across it easily. So what I do is I crank my height until it's just a tiny mount that I want to cut off as you would on a normal lathe, except this one's vertical. And then I lock the vertical position in place. And now we simply cut and start pushing this in perpendicular. This isn't a real lathe, so we gotta make it up as we go. Let's see what we can do with this. Use an actual chisel if you can for cutting like a flat face. So this is what it looks like straight out of the drill press. Um, it's actually very flat. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but for my purposes it's probably good enough. Um, this is a lot of powder and stuff stuck to it because of the nature of the material I'm working with. There's this weird thing um, on the inside. It seems to be like chipping out or something, cratering. In fact, this stuff is so like brittle and, and soft that I can actually chip it out with my fingernails. I don't think that's the, the uh, technique that's causing that. I don't think it's like melting it or something weird. I think it's actually just the blank is weird. So I've got these little wing nuts. I just gotta loosen them a bit to loosen up the plastic that's holding it. And this should just pull out. And what we'll do is we'll just flip it over and try it on the other side. I actually push this one down against the other hose clamp. And that's it. No extra tools needed, no screwdriver or anything. That's it. And 
We'll try shaving off just a little bit. I bet that was out of focus the entire time. Oh yeah, check this out. So it was actually the um, the the blank itself. On the other side, for whatever reason, the material is really brittle. On this side, you can tell this is this is solid resin. And what's really nice is um, I want the edges to be slightly rounded because they'll get caught, and it's really hard to push this into a T piston housing if they're sharp. And while it's spinning, you can just hit it on a little bit of sandpaper. So we're gonna go ahead and try to machine an O-ring slot. So, a little bit less than an inch. And the reason why I don't really care if this is all brittled and damaged on the back, because that doesn't need a seal or anything. In fact, that's probably gonna have a bumper glued onto it. So this surface doesn't matter at all. You want to be able to get a very small slot, specifically for whatever size O-ring you're using. I have a whole bunch of them right here. I don't remember what the size is actually. It might be like 3 16ths of an inch. So we're going to try to put a 3 16ths of an inch slot right around there. And we're going to do that by using this little nail that has a chisel edge kind of thing ground into it just using a bench grinder. But you could probably use a file. Let's see if this thing is still stable. So that's beautiful. But this is pulled down even further. It still spins straight enough for what I'm doing. We're gonna have to cut a little bit at a time. We don't wanna cut this too deep, but we do want it to be deeper than the O-ring is thick. Same procedure as before. We're just gonna push it in. And let's see if we can actually capture this time. Safety glasses, let's go. even if um, it's wedging itself in. Like my, my nail is cut like this, right? Well, not that extreme, but it's cut at like this. Ideally, I think you'd want it to be cut more like this. Since mine's like this, it's actually wedging into the material and that's what's binding it and making it um, chatter so much. But as long as you go very, very slowly, it will grind out all of that extra material that's wedging and it will stop chattering. There you go. That is a nice and tight o-ring slot. I want mine to be slightly looser, but that should be just about deep enough. So we're going to try this. This would be about a 32nd of an inch down, so this will make this wider in the downward direction. It's not chattering as much, but it was still wedging in because the bottom part, again, it's slanted like this, so it's wedging into the bottom. But it wasn't wedging from the top at the same time, so that's much, much better. And, da 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 da, nice loose o ring slot. And the reason why I want it to be loose is because we're doing a floating o ring assembly. This has some really kind of slightly jagged edges from the nail lathing into it. 
So I'm going to smooth that with some 200 grit. I'm just going to very carefully put it into the slot because I don't want the slot to be too much bigger. And then I'm actually going to hit the bottom and see if I can get that any smoother. We'll see what that looks like. Watch out for the, uh, the spinning metal blades of death. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. It, ha it has a much crisper edge now. That feels really, really smooth. So you might be able to see, old piston is in there. This was a really bad test piston made from several layers of PVC. It's got the neoprene on it and everything. We're basically going to be replacing this with a solid brand new one. I have this material, foam mat stuff. I don't actually know what it's used for. We don't want this brittle resin piston slamming backwards and shattering. So we put some padding in. You could probably just use like a rubber cork. Um, you could also use something like that, like hose. Just cut a piece of hose and turn it sideways. I have this, so I'm just going to use this because I know it works. Best way to check it is against this piston. We want to make sure that it fits smaller than that. So, three is probably more than plenty. This is some dense kind of plasticky foam. It's not like uh, cushioning or something like that. I'm going to take this hot glue gun, put a little blob on there. That should be good. Push these bits together. You can see on this piston, there's a slight notch on the front. What this does is when this tries to seal as a floating O-ring, the seal is broken right there so the air can flow past it and that makes it into a check valve. When the air tries to go back though, it cannot and this whole back side should be sealed pretty much perfectly. I actually use the drill to cut that little part on the front side so I could get a little check valve effect and I don't even have to worry that the face on the back of this thing is all chipped out because there's gonna be a bumper right there so it doesn't matter probably don't want to put as much glue as I did so this o-ring is a little bit loose you might be able to see there's a little gap right there that should be fine I'm going to put that over, and it hangs a little bit. And this thing was washed also. I don't know if you can tell, but after sanding it and stuff, it had a bunch of little fine dust on it. I washed it off, dried it. The inside of my gun is already greased, because it's already a working gun. But this could probably deal with having a little bit of silicone lubricant on the O-ring. When we stick this together, the o-ring is bigger than the tube it's itself, but it won't engage until it's about an inch in because of this female threaded adapter. So we got to be careful not to just jam it in and crush up the o-ring. Oh, there we go. So a little finagling went in. Now, if you are to do it the way I have it, where you have these these really large pilot. I'm using a one inch pilot for a one inch valve. Um, do not leave it like this. If you leave this opening, the padding will not catch on this really thin lip. Your bumper or your piston will slam all the way into this PVC. And that's what caused the other old design to chip out. So what I have right here is a, a solid steel washer that's been glued in place. I think it's just super glue. But this gives a nice flat surface to bounce on. So I'm gonna make sure that that's facing correctly or else we could blow this thing apart. It's leaking out the barrel side so we know resin does not seal by itself. So I'm gonna have to take this back to the drill press, put a small hole in there and actually screw this in. Because the pipe that I'm going to be fitting this into is 0.62 inches across. I've got a little bit of tolerance, so it doesn't matter if this is slightly crooked. All right, so just make sure that this is nice and centered. The rubber, that is. The hole inside of the rubber washer 
is large enough that I can kind of shift it around and get it exactly where I want it to be. All right, I'm gonna put this into the gun again. Got the new piston with the new ceiling face made of neoprene. We've got the number 118 O-ring in the center, floating O-ring with a little check valve notch. And we're going to put this down into the gun. Seems to be good. If it doesn't seal now, it's probably because the steel washer is in the way and it's getting in between the piston and the barrel itself. Which is why you want to center it somewhat decently. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? We're gonna test this thing for real. This is 40. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and take it to 60. Even better. The highest I ever go indoors is 80. That's very satisfying. Nice. The new valve's working, new piston's working, all good to go.